Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, this is the uh, UMS webinar on uh, patron services. Uh, my name is Rob Klaus. I'm the president of Unique's uh, patron services and software uh, divisions. And so thank you. Uh, we really uh, appreciate you joining us. We love it when our libraries uh, spend some time with us. And uh, today we'll be covering elements of um, virtual patron service. Um, and from Unique's perspective, uh, we come to this with the experience of actually providing customer service for public libraries. Uh, and what I mean by that is we actually answer the telephone and we answer incoming web chats uh, on behalf of public libraries all across the U.S. and Canada. So uh, patrons may end up calling uh, and they're getting folks that are on our team who are able to help them with really a whole wide variety of different um, types of interactions. Uh, and so that's what we, we've been doing for over 15 years at, at Unique at this point. Uh, and so we've gathered a fair bit of, uh, I guess, knowledge and insight into how that works, how it can work. Uh, and so recently, Lee, we surveyed uh, our, our live community of libraries about how they view virtual service, virtual customer service. Uh, and so today, uh, Josh Neisler, who is our sales director for patron services, will be uh, sharing some elements of that, talking about the relevance of virtual patron service. Josh has been with Unique for over 14 years. He's held a variety of positions within our organizations, uh, starting initially actually uh, with somebody who was handling incoming patron uh, interactions and questions. So, and, and then all the way through working with public libraries now on how they're uh, meeting the needs uh, that they have for providing great, excellent customer service in a virtual capacity. So Josh is going to take us through some of that stuff. Again, I thank you for joining us. Josh, I'll turn it over to you. Hey, Rob, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm going to share um, uh, my screen with you all. And hopefully you're able to see that. Uh, re really appreciate you all joining us today. As Rob said, I'm Josh Neisler. Um, I'm a sales consultant here at Unique Management Services. And really our purpose today uh, is to share some insights from our recent library customer service survey that we hope will be useful and actionable for you. Uh, so from a, an agenda perspective, uh, we'll talk about uh, what we found out in terms of what channels of service libraries are offering, how the, well they're performing on those channels, um, obstacles they're experiencing and seeing to improving uh, their overall service levels. And then we'll wrap up uh, with a brief overview of how Unique's contact center service uh, can help libraries uh, over some of those hurdles. But first, let's, uh, let's look at the results uh, that we saw in the customer survey. As far as survey participants, we heard from folks serving in a diverse array of roles and communities and libraries of different sizes. Uh, we asked them uh, about the successes and challenges uh, they're experiencing in their libraries from small uh, and rural libraries uh, to huge metropolitan systems. Uh, the data we got back shed some light on how a cross-section of public libraries are handling both their in-person interactions with patrons as well as virtual inquiries. Um, and we wanna share those results with you today. Now, the overwhelming majority uh, of libraries reported that the quality of in-person service they provide uh, is very good to exceptional which is great to see uh, because that means, uh, you know, those in-person interactions are making a positive impact towards shaping how the library is perceived in the community uh, by those folks whose taxes support the library and who you exist to serve. On the other hand, the ratings on handling virtual inquiries were more mixed. Um, here we're talking about patron inquiries over channels like the telephone and live chat. 
44% uh, of survey respondents rated their performance as average or below when it came to those virtual inquiries. And 5% even said um, that their level of performance was very bad. And what that means is that's potentially thousands of patrons that are going to be frustrated and disappointed uh, by their library and the interactions they experience when they reach out to the library. Now, a similar number at 35% agreed they had a need to improve virtual service performance. And that's really commendable. You know, it's important for all of us uh, and the organizations we represent to be honest with ourselves about our strengths and weaknesses and where we have room to improve. Um, it's almost football season, and so I wanted to throw in a football quote right here. Uh, the great Hall of Fame coach Bill Walsh once said, you know, if we're all thinking alike, nobody's really thinking. If we're all thinking alike, then nobody's really thinking. And what he meant by that was that within every team and organization, uh, there needs to be a way, uh, a mechanism, a time, a safe context for healthy self-critique and critical thinking to take place in order for that team or organization uh, to realize concrete improvements that make a positive impact. Of course, nearly all libraries reported that they provide virtual service over the phone, over email, uh, contact forms, and social media. However, live chat and two-way texting are available at a much lower rate. Only 22% of libraries reported offering live chat on their website. And that has the potential to impact engagement with all kinds of patrons who prefer those channels of communication, including younger patrons uh, as the generations that tend to use those mediums exclusively. <clears throat> Live chat is also a great way for libraries to communicate with patrons because it's very efficient in the sense that multiple conversations uh, can be handled at the same time by one person. Also worth pointing out here, uh, you'll notice on the chart that very few libraries have centralized their phone traffic to an internal contact center or team where phone inquiries can be handled uh, in a more focused manner uh, by a team that's specifically trained to do that well. Uh, the vast majority of libraries uh, in our survey uh, continue to route calls to the various service desks at their different branches uh, where the staff who are responsible to interact in person with patrons and perform a, a, a wide variety of other on-site duties are also expected uh, to answer the phone whenever it rings and provide great service on the phone. Respondents said live chat and SMS channels weren't offered at their library for a variety of overlapping reasons, uh, including budgetary constraints, a perceived lack of need by leadership, as well as staffing limitations. Um, just to provide some free advice based on our experience over the last 15 years, with something like live chat, what we have found over time is that the, the devil is really in the details as far as the need for it, uh, demand uh, on the part of patrons and how strongly it's adopted by patrons. Many libraries have tried live chat at some point in the past and their opinion of its viability um, or lack thereof is probably based on that trial run at some point. Um, but my questions around that would be, how quickly were you answering the chats on average? Uh, was the chat available everywhere on the website or just a few pages? Uh, did it work well on mobile devices? Uh, did the people answering the chats have access to all the systems they would need to resolve the vast majority of those inquiries and did they have sufficient guidance and training to perform effectively and meet the expectations of patrons? Now, <clears throat> having said that, I do understand that the logistics of trying to answer live chats or text from patrons are challenging to say the least, 
uh, for most libraries uh, for the very simple reason uh, that there's not like a zillion of them uh, coming in per hour for even very large library systems. You know, they're scattered through the day. Uh, but when they do come in, you have to knock it out of the park. You have to be ready to answer within seconds. Otherwise, patrons won't trust it as a reliable channel uh, of service and communication with you, and they really won't use it at the level that you would hope. So I understand the complexities uh, of trying to pull that off in addition to everything else you're trying to accomplish on a daily basis. Now, uh, we also asked, what are the hurdles that need to be overcome to improve overall service performance, and especially when it comes to virtual service? The number one obstacle to better virtual service cited in the survey uh, was staffing issues of different kinds. So training, staff turnover, and lack of staff were all cited in large numbers as obstacles to giving greater um, levels of patron service. And then I would just also add, based on my conversations with libraries every day, uh, that you know, sort of one step back um, from training and turnover and low staffing levels is that <clears throat> many libraries struggle with attracting qualified a player type candidates um, uh, to join their team. Uh, so finding uh, the right people and then hiring them and training them and then retaining them over time uh, is a big challenge uh, for many, many libraries in our experience. Now staffing issues impact both in-person and virtual service delivery. And if you just stop and think about it, it makes sense. Uh, it puts your team in a position to multitask or to be placed in situations they're not comfortable with or prepared for. And that's not good for your team or their morale um, or the quality uh, of the interactions with patrons that they're having every day. And that fact is actually borne out in what respondents reported on patron wait times. Uh, for patrons getting in touch virtually, 48% experience, experience a wait, sometimes, usually, or always. So things like being put on hold on the phone, uh, messages sitting in inboxes waiting for a reply, unanswered emails, all contribute uh, to delays in service and patron dissatisfaction. And that, not only does that frustrate patrons, but if staff aren't correctly set up and put in a position to be successful, it can cause headaches for them uh, as they try to help patrons in person as well as virtually. And of course, the longer the delay, the more likely it becomes that the patron is going to look elsewhere for the resources and information they need, uh, whether that's a neighboring library, Amazon, or some other resource. So delayed customer service also re re results in delayed or missed transaction opportunities. Um, uh, and those are transactions that you then can't count toward your annual numbers. The reason staffing issues are such a challenge is that they create a negative self-perpetuating cycle where lack of staff leads to under training because you don't have the time to do it and you're just trying to plug holes and get bodies out on the floor. And then under training and lack of staff leads to staff churning out. And the cycle just continues from there on and on. Uh, in the meantime, responsive, responsiveness and accuracy in handling patron inquiries suffers. Patrons get hurried uh, answers that aren't always uh, 100% correct. They're frustrated, you know, by those conflicting answers that they get from different staff members and the overall satisfaction that uh, patrons express when it comes to interacting with the library suffers as a result.
So to put a finer point on what's going on in libraries from a staffing perspective, libraries are experiencing understaffing and underqualified candidates. Uh, those challenges are then amplified when incoming phone calls and other virtu uh, virtual inquiries are added to the mix. Uh, and then having inexperienced and undertrained staff impacts the accuracy of information that they relay to patrons. So how, how can Unique help with those kinds of things? How do you stop that cycle, uh, relieve the pressure, and give your library space and time to recruit and hire A players, train them, and keep them, and at the same time, improve your overall level of service delivery? Well, <clears throat> this is what our contact center service is actually designed to do. Uh, so we help libraries alleviate the challenges that come with staffing fluctuations, lack of training and turnover. Uh, with the phone calls and live chats handled by Unique, libraries have extra breathing room to get their staff trained, to schedule them strategically, and to focus on uh, core priorities like better in-person service, programming, and community outreach. And then your team will be happier and more productive when they don't have to drop uh, what they're doing to answer a, a phone call or a live chat, or be put in that position where they have to decide where, whether to help, help the patron in front of them or pick up that ringing phone. Uh, your team will also have the freedom to give in-library patrons their undivided attention, whether that's at the desk or getting out from behind the desk and wandering into the stacks to assist a patron. And then at the same time, uh, the unique team does the same, provides the same uninterrupted, undivided attention type service uh, to patrons who are on the phone or communicating over live chat. And then just worth noting as a footnote, um, many libraries also ask us to answer their phone calls and chats beyond library hours uh, uh, so that patrons can reach out, you know, whenever it happens to be convenient for them, whenever they're thinking about contacting the library. So the net impact uh, we provide uh, is a baseline of stability and reliability and continuity when it comes uh, to the virtual service that your library uh, is able to provide, which represents a significant volume of work that needs to, to be handled, but not only handled, uh, but handled well. Uh, and that's what we've been doing uh, for the last 15 years plus here at Unique. Now, having served 50 plus uh, different library systems over the years, uh, we're well positioned to answer and resolve uh, virtually the whole gamut of patron inquiries uh, from basic questions about branches and services to account questions, to search help, to e-media support and beyond. Um, our team typically interfaces uh, with the library's ILS system to handle account-related questions and transactions, which represents a huge piece of the pie of what patrons are calling or chatting about, perhaps as much as 60% for any given library. And then as well, <clears throat> we have an ongoing quality insurance uh, assurance program uh, that ensures continual improvement and refinement uh, of the service that we're able to deliver over time. Uh, and in turn, we report back on the quantity and quality of the interactions we're handling on behalf of on behalf of your library um, so that you have total transparency and visibility uh, into uh, into how unique is supporting your library uh, and your patrons. Um, so that's an overview of uh, the services that we're able to provide um, and the impact that those services can have. Uh, in terms of the outcome of elevating the overall um, level of service delivery a library is able to realize uh, when they partner with us. It's very common in many, many libraries, and understandably so, um, that we think of the library as, um, as a building or, or several buildings where service is provided 
in person and face to face. And that is what a library uh, is and what it does. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I think it's often underestimated um, how how many patron interactions happen virtually versus in person and how important it is to handle those really, really well um, and, uh, and how that uh, can then improve uh, your reputation in the community and the overall level of satisfaction uh, that patrons have um, as a result of it being super easy and pleasant to interact with you, however a, a patron might choose to reach out. Uh, so that's that's what we're passionate about here at Unique. Uh, it's what we have a lot of experience doing over time. Um, and it's where we've seen that we've been able to provide just tremendous, tremendous impact uh, when it comes to serving our library partners uh, and supporting their patrons. You know, if this contact center service is something you'd like to explore uh, as a potential fit for your library, I'd be happy to connect with you. Uh, I'm gonna drop my calendar link <laughs> in the chat uh, here in a second. And uh, at that link, you can schedule a no obligation, no pressure initial call, uh, where we can just spend some time discovering together whether this is a service that would add value for your library. Now, I wanna be very clear that this isn't something that's a fit for every library for a variety of reasons. And what we found over time is that it works best and provides lasting impact uh, with libraries who see it uh, as an integral piece of their overall service delivery strategy. Um, so this is a, strate a strategic uh, partnership um, uh, that we're building into our overall plan uh, to serve patrons uh, rather than just a nice to have optional extra. So th if this is something that you could be, that, that you could see as being potentially strategic um, for alleviating some of the challenges we've talked about today and really moving things forward in, in terms of your overall level of patron service, I would love to chat with you. Um, so we'll, we'll wrap it up there, give you back a little bit of time. Uh, re really appreciate you all joining us today. Hope this has been helpful. Um, and I'm going to put my, my calendar link in the chat for you. Uh, but apart from that, um, appreciate you attending and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. deal thanks thanks again josh really appreciate it and uh, we will be sending this recording out as well uh, to those of you uh, who attended um, we really appreciate your time and i hope that you could see uh, if you are struggling with with some patron service challenges that unique could could be a viable option for you in, in meeting those challenges so thanks again for joining us today <laughs>